All right, well, I'm still working on this little uh, microamp pulse motor, and uh, a lot of people think it's kind of a waste of time and and all that, but uh, it was a quest of mine years and years and years ago to get a self-runner, something that uh, just ran on its own, and it was a pipe dream. And I started doing it in 2007, thinking, you know, how hard could that be just to make something... Uh, work off ambient energy in the room or whatever and just ran all the time. It's something that was a, a an art object, a curio object that you could set on the shelf and just look at year after year. And it is a lot harder than you think to get something to move uh, continuously for years on end. But anyway, this is where I'm at. Uh, it's running on a 3 volt lithium watch battery and it's been running that way for weeks. Um, it's down around about uh, four microamps, and the quest of the lately has been the bearing surface for the uh, the rotor. And what I've gone to is a suspended needle that I'm eventually going to put a sapphire bearing at the top there, and then at the bottom, the uh, bottom part of the rotor is just held uh, in place by magnetism at the bottom. And then up at the top is, uh, like I say, a, is a uh, a bearing surface I'm working on. And what I've got here, which does work, is you just take the uh, tongue depressor stick and you make a dimple in it. And I used uh, just the, a pin and I put a dimple in it like that. Just worked it around. And then uh, I took a pencil and I put graphite in that hole with the pencil then I took crazy glue and I put crazy glue in there and the crazy glue mixed with the graphite and I let that set up then I hit it again with the graphite pencil and then I put oil in it and so it's kind of a slurry of stuff and then the uh, little needle just uh, sits in the the bearing surface like that And that actually formed a pretty good bearing because these, these rotors are so light that it doesn't take a lot to get them off the ground with magnetism. Now this one here, I had to add uh, three magnets at the top to get it up in the air, but uh, there's not a lot of force when you're doing it this way. You've, got, you've negated the gravity with magnetism, so you're not working against gravity much. Uh, on the bottom it's suspended it's not it's not actually sitting on that bearing at the bottom it's just being held by magnetism and the suspension is up at the top with the uh, needle point and uh, it uh, like I say it's being held up in the air uh, the driver is this um, dad have circuit highly modified and then I tried using the uh, two uh, two magnet uh, bar rotor, like a Theodore Poly was the first one I saw do that, to try to get it to just fire twice per revolution. But it stopped a couple of times over the last week or so, and I couldn't figure out why. And I think what's happening is um, you need the flywheel effect of that rotor going around in case something happens, uh, gets blown by wind, or the cabinet where it's sitting uh, gets jostled. And one of the times that stopped is my wife opened up one of those drawers, and I uh, had it sitting on that top shelf, and it jostled it just enough to stop, stop it. So I've gone away from this, and I've gone back to the, uh, the jar lid kind of rotor that uh, has the inertia and the stability to keep on running uh, if it gets bumped or the wind blows on it or whatever. This thing here was so lightweight it just, uh, like I say, it stopped a couple of times so I've gone away from that and I've gone back to the uh, the rotor uh, jar lid. But that's what uh, that thing looks like now. If you can see that or not. It's suspended up in the air, and then at the bottom it's just held with the magnetism. Anyway, we'll, we'll keep this going. I have a sapphire bearing to put on this thing. Uh, the sapphire bearing is going to go right here, uh, where the sapphire bearing goes. 
Uh, I got it at Amazon.com, and I just went over there, and uh, they don't have them available anymore. So I'm on the hunt now for a sapphire bearing, and they were expensive. I can't remember what I spent. It was five or six dollars for a little teeny bearing, I think. I'll have to hunt around for it. But uh, Laser Saber is the one that gave the link to that, and that's what he uses on his Easy Spins or these uh, sapphire bearings. And you run it in a fairly good quality steel needle, and uh, this friction goes way, way down. But this uh, setup here, for testing purposes anyway, has actually worked out pretty darn good. And I don't know how long that would run like that, but uh, like I said, it's been running for um, a long time now. Um, probably what I might end up doing is getting a rechargeable lithium 3-volt battery and putting a solar panel on this and then using a solar energy plus a lithium rechargeable coin cell and getting it to run all the time uh, probably have to redo this structure and have it in such a way that you can put it in a glass bell jar and if you look at laser sabers uh, easy spins he put some of them in these glass bell jars to keep the dirt and the dust off of it but my experience with putting stuff under glass if you've got a solar panel inside that they don't work as good because the glass filters out the ultraviolet evidently and keeps the solar cell from working like it should that's been my experience so I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna end up putting this all together in it like I say what I want is I want something that sits up on that shelf you know, like my some of my other favorite little projects, and uh, just runs uh, runs on its own on its own with no attention. You know, we'll just see how this little project plays out. Like I say, some people think this is kind of a silly quest, but it's something I started a long time ago. Um, it was a uh, chasing windmills, uh, free runner, self runner kind of thing. But uh, this is uh, what I ended up with after all these years—a little toy like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching.